I'm very happy that I have the chance to talk with the film team of Beta. We have the scriptwriter Helga Arnastatir and the director Ragnar Henriksson, and both are the producers of Beta, an Icelandic children's film running in our children's and youth film competition this year. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and yes, you are. Um, You are working together on the film and you are also um, be, live together in reality. And I would be very curious who of you had the idea um, to realize Birte and yeah, how the, the project started. <laughs> well, yeah, I got, the, I got, I got the idea. Um, partly it's based on my youth. I was raised uh, with a single mother hardworking single mother who was a freelance artist or an actress. And uh, I'm, my youth was pretty much, you know, like everyone else's, but, um, but there was a struggle, financial struggle, I noticed in my upbringing. And um, once uh, my mother had been uh, playing in a project um, for an independent theater and She was depending on that, you know, for Christmas financially. And something happened um, at the theater that they couldn't pay her her salaries. And she got really worried about not having any money for Christmas. And I was um, a 14 year old teenager and she told me about this and was really anxious. But She told me in the end of the conversation, Helga, please don't worry. My, your mother will always take care of everything before Christmas. There will be Christmas. You don't have to worry about that. There is always, you know, that Christmas are always going to be there, you know. Or what? I think, I think it would be, she would probably say, Christmas will come. Well, Christmas Don't worry. will come. Christmas will yeah, yeah, come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the, the, the direct translation from Icelandic. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, what? I, I hadn't imagined that they wouldn't come. I, I, I did not think of that we couldn't have uh, celebrate Christmas together. But I mean, she was assuring me that everything was okay despite the fact that she didn't get, get paid. Mm. But instead of calming me down <laughs> with this <laughs> sentence, she just showed a little bit of, of a, like a child's anxiety, you know. And I, I remember the next few years after, I was always like, do you have enough money for Christmas? Is it okay now? Y yes, of course, why are you asking? You shouldn't worry about these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been writing children's stories and I said, okay, uh, Braille encouraged me to write uh, scripts, film scripts. And, and, and I said, okay, maybe I should just start with this idea and, and uh, you know, develop it. And, and, and the story just came, you know, it, I was, it didn't take much time to write it when I finally sat down. No, to do when, it. when you had outlined it, yeah. it was so, so, such a clear story. But yeah. let me. Let me maybe make one thing clear. I'm a, uh, Helga is a journalist. And through her uh, career as a journalist on national TV, she's been a, a TV personality on screen, like uh, in a weekly show for many, many, many years and has extensive experience in writing um, about criminal cases and, and, and all sorts of news, health-related health issues and stuff like that. And what she is extremely good at is to uh, summarize. But it's like everything I read from her is there's nothing there that, sh that shouldn't be there. You know, she, she's an expert in, in editing herself and, and throwing out bits that don't have to be there. And I read her script, uh, which she, you know, didn't make too much of. You know, no, it's just, like, a small, just, it's a just a small story, just for a little maybe for TV maybe or something. Maybe a little outlet, you know. And, and I read it and I said, no, 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 this could be a movie. Because, uh, and I was like, no, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I immediately uh, was very excited about this uh, idea of how a child can take something that us adults feel very, very uh, simple, mm -hmm. even, and really take it to heart in such a way that it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a life and death situation. Will Christmas come? What? I mean, 
we won't be able to celebrate Christmas. She actually believes it. And if, if the approach of the, of the uh, uh, storytelling is uh, totally and believably and very seriously from that point of view of the child, I thought it we had a really interesting uh, story to tell and with the right casting uh, and the right, you, you know, the, the uh, uh, right crew and everything, we could make this happen. In COVID. In COVID Day times. Two. <laughs> Not that then. Yeah, okay. we shot in, in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in lockdown, Yeah, actually. In lockdown. <laughs> okay, we are talking a little bit more about the uh, um, conditions you had to face while uh, making the film, but uh, Helga, as you said, it's a quite personal story, and Prague, you mentioned the cast. Was it mm -hmm. especially difficult doing the cast, since you maybe had your own personality in your mind while looking for a girl, or how did you meet your your actress, um, Christine Peters, that year. she just won the award as best yeah. actress at Schlinge Film Festival, and this is so deserved. So she's really amazing. Where did yeah. you find her, and how was the casting process? Well, the casting process, we decided to uh, contact the, the theater groups here, uh, and we asked for kids that uh, had experience uh, uh, in acting on stage, maybe uh, TV or, or, or commercial. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I always look for is discipline, that they know that there will be a lot of waiting, how they can wait and they can listen. Um, so we had a, a, a few uh, girls come in for uh, test screening. And what happened with uh, Christine is our line producer has a friend who is a friend with Christine's father. Okay, yeah. That's how it happened. Mm, that's how it happened. And, yeah. and they said, oh, they, uh, that's, that's how she heard about it, yeah. Christine. And uh, one thing led to another. Uh, and she, she was added to the group of kids. Mm -hmm. And she came in and just blew us away she with did, her yeah. reading. We were just, you know. Uh, and, and because all the test screening that we, uh, I mean, the uh, casting sessions were all, uh, we decided to have it in a studio. We lit it quite dramatically. We shot it with a cinema lens. We got a, a, a good camera. We just wanted to immediately see mm -hmm. if the kids, you know, w were um, cinematic, mm -hmm. you know. And she became Birta, like she became Birta mm -hmm. just by reading the first sentence, you know. Yeah, well, she, she had, she, first of all, she had memorized yes. the scene. Yeah, she had memorized yeah. the scene, so, so well she didn't read. That she it was almost, really pro. she almost couldn't deviate from the way she had rehearsed it. Mm -hmm. And I asked her to do it three times and it was very identical. She had obviously memorized it, but she had also um, created a way in which to deliver this audition. And then I started to ask her to change something. And she did that. Mm -hmm. And so, so not only was, was her reading ex 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 exceptional, mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, her, yeah, her, her acting, acting was just, you know, she stood up, you know, of all, all, all the auditions because she, would, she just became Birta and showed various feelings and emotions during that process that we just, yeah, we were just blown away. Yeah. And very intelligent. Mm -hmm. There was never a question about anyone mm -hmm. else than her. Okay, <laughs> that sounds like a success story. <laughs> And yeah. um, yes, tell us about making a film under COVID conditions. Mm. Well, we were so because Iceland pr pretty much went. You know, we didn't came. Uh, we didn't come badly out of the first wave. You know, we really handled it well. So we were up and coming. You know, yeah, this summer. Optimistic. You know, you know. We're going to shoot it this fall when COVID is not here. And then we opened up the country and it hit us like, like two tourists from, from France. From France. Just <laughs> Unfortunately, brought down everything. Brought down the, the, you know, <laughs> the society. <laughs> and we had nearly, yeah, we had 10 people limitations. Like uh, we, we weren't, yeah. We, in, in a complete lockdown, but it was escalating, uh, you know, and, and we were like shooting, we started shooting the 1st of October yeah, and, yeah. and 
the traditional. It was the, the, the ten, 10 people limits, wasn't it? Or it was, was, a, was it 20? No, it was 10 people limit, yeah. but we were able to uh, exception. get an exception mm -hmm. from the rules. Uh, so we uh, had, had to have a, a medical vehicle outside the set. So when the crew uh, came to work, went to lunch, from lunch, and went home, they all had to be tested. Uh, temperature. Uh, we had everybody had gloves. We had to have masks and try to, you know, stay at least two meters away from each other. It was really difficult in the apartment, at least. And then also, four of the crew members were <laughs> on call or 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 were already hired for Hollywood productions. So there was always a person coming into our set who had to go to our medical vehicle. Uh, be tested to come to our set to test them or they were sent off set to be tested somewhere else and then come be tested again with us and then come to the set you know but we made it work and, and yeah and, and it you it know did. it worked we we shot it on and, our um, within our schedule and nobody in the crew and the cast got infected apart from one Act, uh, actress, 12 year old actress, who was going to play a bit of friend. Yeah. Uh, someone had to replace her. Yeah. Okay. Small part. Uh, that sounds like a lot of, lot of organization you had to uh, do in addition to the, to the normal mm -hmm. shooting. Mm. Um, yes, there are different family constellations you are having in your film. You are having the single mother, and then you are having the neighbor's family where every day uh, full house and yeah. can you tell us a little bit about why you chose this or is is it a big uh, topic in Iceland yeah well as a single mother myself uh, for four years ago I, I was a single mother for, for three years I, I found it uh, really interesting that I I, I isolated I, I got isolated a bit you know when you're alone with a child um, and you don't have a big support group you you find it that you you find your life is not at the same place as others socially you know you're you, you're in you're locked in with your child in the, in the evenings and 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 uh, I was focusing on that social isolation that many families, you know, and small families that don't have any support net, you know, experience. And I've noticed it about Asian families here in Iceland. They, they, they really know how to have fun. They really know how to get together, get together. They really know how to make parties. And, and the families here, the Asian families, they, and and other families from abroad, I, I find that it's it, it's incredibly um, you know they they are they love to be together, and I worry a bit that some Icelandic families you know and and it's talked about all over the world that we are getting more isolated from our our people from our but we need it to survive you know socially we need it. Mm -hmm. And, and health-wise, we need it. So I was uh, portraying, you know, their family. She's just working so much, their mother. She's always trying to make ends meet. You know, she's thinking about those two girls. Um, their father lives in, in Sweden with another woman and she doesn't get the support from him, you know, uh, apart from the financial factor, which is not much. Um, and because she's independent, she's educated, she's independent, she's got pride, you know, mm -hmm. that's what she's doing. So the fact that the girls connect to the woman on the upper floor, you know, who's really like their grandmother and the, the Asian family downstairs, it's because children need people. And when you get isolated with your child, the child experiences isolation, you know. So that's something I was thinking about in the, in the story making. Mm -hmm. I really like this. And I'm just thinking about a saying, an African saying that it needs one whole village to raise a child. And Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that too. You know, yeah. it is. Yeah. And another um, yeah, topic of the film, maybe it's too tragic 
um, but um, ch child poverty here in Germany is a really big issue. So the number of families living in poverty increases from year to year. So this is really frightening. Mm -hmm. Is this a problem in Iceland? Or is it well, this? yeah, of, co of course, we've got poverty, but mm -hmm. the poverty is projected uh, partly like we show in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, 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 I emphasize with Brian that I didn't want to show the, the misery and the poverty because here are really poor families, of course, with no money and all kinds of social problems. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to just show the middle class. Uh, and it's an interesting... Um, the struggle within yeah. the middle class because, and especially single parents, you know. And it's an interesting focus. Uh, because we're talking about poverty and it's not really poverty it's being broke mm -hmm. if you could put, if you could uh, phrase it like that mm -hmm. and it's interesting to me and and, and what we're, we are talking about here is that uh, their mother has an education of four years to become a registered nurse but but still has to work you know uh, to make ends meet overtime to make ends meet. meet sorry and it's interesting, and it's an you know it's an interesting um, a topic to to mm -hmm. have as a world in your story. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also how it portrays uh, how children look at it. You mm -hmm. know, they don't understand why you just can't pay for shoes mm -hmm. right away. Why you just can't pay for the for the fees, the sport fees. You know, why can't you just do it? I, I remember when we used those, when my parents used those checks, you know, the ch they had a checkbook. You remember it? <laughs> it's our, yeah. And I said once with my mother, why do you, don't you just write a check? And my mother said, there has to be money for the check. <laughs> yeah. And I said, Is, isn't it? Isn't it Is, money? Isn't there? You just write. No, I don't have dollars, any money so... in, in the check. Okay. <laughs> you know, children, Children look at it that way, you know. And I guess we have the same problem today with kids who are getting credit cards too young. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah. this this uh, this is something I got from my uh, an interview from um, uh, organization within the church that told me how children experience the poverty. Mm -hmm. They experience it like this. They they don't have equipment for their sports. They don't have maybe upgraded shoes and costumes you know probably they won't be able to to participate in in, in many sports maybe just one because the the financial you know struggle is, is so much you know than some families mm -hmm. and and this is what she told me that i mean every child i think gets to eat in iceland when we, we don't allow any child to live in a bad uh, housing you know i think we we have i hope so you know that we we have child authorities that that really mm -hmm. prevent that but this this is the poverty factor you know the 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 broke slash poverty you know children experience this mm -hmm. you know they can't take part as the other ones mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah exactly and I, I know what you mean yeah 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 Okay, Bragi, I think you are um, the filmmaker who have been to Lübeck most often in the last 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember the first children's film we had in the program, they were the sweppy films, they were mm -hmm. unbelievable, funny and just entertaining. And then mm -hmm. um, since a few years, you are doing uh, totally different films. You are having the child on the focus, taking the child's very very seriously their problems and uh you have films for yeah you always have the feeling that you are on the level with the children mm -hmm. can you tell me and us a little bit about this development and what can we expect in the future good question <laughs> <laughs> thank you for those kind words yeah, yeah. um i guess the the only answer i can give you is that i i have uh total respect for the child as a same kind of actor as an, as an adult. And I've, and I've noticed a, 
um, both in Europe and especially here, that that um, filmmakers and storytellers uh, kind of have to put themselves into a position to make material for children, even, almost. Oh, okay. I'm not making a real movie. I'm making a children's movie. No, then then it has to be. Um, needs to be like, funny. You know, it needs to be funny. And it needs to be flamboyant and has to be colorful. Um, you know, with lots of loud and, and interesting music. I don't really agree with this. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm, I'm exploring that that, that area um, to tell stories from as much as I can from the uh, child's point of view and try to be true to that view and with them also. And, 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 have, and what I always do is I have the children read the script and make it their own in a way. So if there's any kind of dialogue or any kind of action that they feel that they would not, you know, absolutely not say or portray, we have a discussion about that. And often enough, we uh, bend it in their direction. And I find it, make, it makes the, makes it more truthful. Um, I'm, I am uh, my next project uh, is not going to not going to be a children's film. It's going to be a psychological thriller. <laughs> so we'll That's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, take a little pause from the children's mm -hmm. films for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The collaboration of you two will this be continued? Yes, yeah. we yeah we work together. We work, uh, work well together. Yeah, she, yeah. she's uh, written the script for it. Really, really good script based on a novel that we obtained the rights for, and we are now looking for uh, co-producers and financiers to uh, jump on board with us for that film mm -hmm. uh, in the next year. Like a real life thriller in, in cold, dark Iceland. In January. <laughs> in January, February. the darkest month. Yeah. Okay, well, that sounds uh, yeah. like something you can easily sell to Germany. We are still fans yeah. of Scandinavian <laughs> crime yeah. stories and thrillers. Yeah. I think everyone are, you know, that there's something unique about that. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I'll just leave, leave my email and phone number here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much for taking the time talking about Birte. We are looking forward to welcoming both of you in Lübeck in two weeks. Thank you. We look forward to. It is our privilege. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. <laughs>